The Bitcoin is a virtual or electronic payment system that was started in 2009. Similar to the name of the payment system, Bitcoins are the name of the currency utilized by the system. Bitcoins differ from traditional currencies in that they are not regulated or managed by a single individual, such as with the Federal Reserve and the U.S. dollar. Bitcoins are a virtual currency and utilize public key cryptography in that the Bitcoins are given two keys, one that's private and one that's publicly available. These keys are basically randomized strings of letters and numbers. Only the owners of the Bitcoins should know the private key, but the public key can be publicly known so that transactions can be verified. As such, the currency serves as an anonymous form of payment. There's no name associated with the, the key number. Um, and new Bitcoins have to be earned by individuals in exchange for processing Bitcoin transactions. There is a centralized database for Bitcoins that records all transactions that have ever occurred involving Bitcoins. This is referred to as the blockchain. Uh, myself, coming from an accounting background, this makes a little bit more sense and it's kind of easier to understand to me. It's essentially the equivalent of the financial books of a, of a company that contains all of the journal entries that a company would make to record transactions, except that these books would be open to the public as Bitcoin utilizes open source software. Uh, myself or anybody else can go out and look at the blockchain and transactions that have taken place and any new transactions have to be verified as legitimate and not just an individual trying to spend their bitcoins twice. This process involves checking the entire blockchain to verify that the public keys for bitcoins have not already been spent. Once the public key is searched in the blockchain to verify that these bitcoins have not already been spent, then this new transaction gets added to the blockchain. A uh, transaction involving bitcoins is what is referred to as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction as individuals are verifying transactions and not third-party payment processors such as PayPal, MasterCard, or Visa. So you are probably wondering who these individuals are who are verifying these bitcoin transactions. New bitcoins are created and given to individuals in return for checking these new transactions against the blockchain. This is a very competitive process as only one individual who can verify 10 minutes worth of transactions the fastest earns the Bitcoin. The payment for this 10 minute verification period is 25 Bitcoin, which has a value of around $11,000. Verifying these transactions though takes more computing power and thus electricity as more transactions are added to the blockchain simply by virtue of having to search through more information in transactions and upgrade the computing systems that are used to verify these transactions. Uh, individuals who verify these transactions typically build their own custom computer systems and programs to check the blockchain in order to win the prize. This process of issuing new bitcoins is estimated to end in 21 40, as the cap on the number of bitcoins is 21 million. At that point in time, it is believed that individuals who verify transactions will be paid in the form of a fee based on the number of transactions verified versus being issued new, new bitcoins. The price of a bitcoin is determined purely by individuals on an open market, which as of April 28th, the price for one Bitcoin was at $443. This highly lucrative and competitive process also helps to ensure that professionals are verifying these transactions. An individual like myself could try to verify and win this competition, but it'd be very unlikely. Bitcoin can be used in many of the same ways as physical. There are many major online retailers who accept Bitcoin, such as In addition to purchases from retailers, Bitcoin can also be used. Bitcoin can be bought and sold, and therefore can be used as an 
There are many different inhibitors and enablers to using Bitcoin, um, so I'm just going to highlight a couple of them that do enable and inhibit the adoption and use of Bitcoin in today's economy. To start out, we will be talking about the inhibitors. So first off, one of the biggest inhibitors to Bitcoin, in my opinion, is the regulatory entities and centralized banks that is that are utilizing it or in this case, not utilizing it. There are statements being released daily regarding the cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin, which Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. And just recently, in late March of 2014, the IRS announced that Bitco Bitcoins are property for purposes of taxation and that they can be taxable at the time that they are received. This creates the burden of tracking all Bitcoins spent or received in the United States. And so this can add stressors and implication to those looking to use Bitcoins as a means of exchange. Next, we'll move on to discussing some enablers to Bitcoin. And as I mentioned a little bit ago, there are a lot of enablers these days, especially as Bitcoin is more and up and coming. But I will focus on one that I thought was particularly interesting, as it is one of the quickest growing and more surprising enablers of Bitcoin. And that is universities and other institutions of higher learning. More specifically, out of Stanford University in California, they've partnered with Coursera to provide two cryptography courses. And as I mentioned before, Bitcoin is a form of cryptocurrency. Um, Coursera is a free online education platform, so these wouldn't be in-person lecture classes provided at the university. They are all online, so they could be accessed by anyone, anywhere throughout the world. And being online, um, this course would consist of video lectures, quizzes, as well as homework, and these would be taught by the head of Stanford's Applied Cryptology Group. So it is a head of a student-led organization actually teaching these classes. This is a free course offered in order to get students a better understanding of the underlying technology of specifically Bitcoin and other different cryptocurrencies. This course is one of the first higher learning to embrace and promote the concept of crypto cryptography and like I said more specifically Bitcoin. So I definitely can set the pace for what is to come especially you know as other universities can catch on to this. People all over the world can take course and spread the word about the use of Bitcoin and just um, keep the technology growing and encourage its use among different types of businesses and industries. Now it's time to talk about SWOT analysis, its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. A SWOT analysis will guide us to identify the positives and negatives and the um, external environments that's up for opportunities and threats. Bitcoins has many elements that strengthen its, po its position in the industry, but the strongest one is to be the bearish digital currency completely governed and maintained by its users and thus having no place restrictions. Below is a list of all the elements that can be considered to give advantages to Bitcoins. These like um, transfer directly person to person, no middle men or agents commission, very low processing fees, the account cannot be frozen, not prerequisites and not discriminating, limited number of coins to be produced, it can be exchanged for any currency and it only needs an internet connection. Bitcoin weaknesses some of the internal factors that can be referred as a weaknesses and thus placing Bitcoin as disadvantage to others is that um, it is being um, a new product and it's still vulnerable and not widely known. 
still in process of maturing, uh, which means some new tools, features, or services are not ready yet and still vulnerable, just as any new product, that is why it has been victim of hackers' attacks. Some positive elements that Bitcoin could exploit, exploit to its advantage. Um, it needs to grow in order to be used as major currency. It doesn't cost anything to start uh, for, to start accepting them. Not worries about accounts getting compromised, and it can be used internationally without worries of converting into local currency. Lastly, threats. Some external factors that could cause trouble and thus threaten the use of bitcoins are those especially concerning with changes in regulations and legislation. Some examples could be increasing in payment fees or levying of mandatory taxes, as well as it can be misused because it is not legal and there are not regulated terms in the existing financial systems. It has been deemed illegal by sovereigns. Uncertainty, unlike bank accounts, the FDIC doesn't insure Bitcoin wallets. And the Department of Homeland Security of USA referred to it as an emerging threat and an imminent dangerous tool for many criminals. The overall structure of Bitcoin should remain relatively the same. The payment system and how it works has already been established. The only change is likely to come when no more new Bitcoins will be issued around the year 2140. Since there will be no more new Bitcoins in 2140, some form of compensation will be necessary to make it worthwhile for individuals to build these custom computer systems to verify new transactions against the blockchain. Currently, voluntary fees can be sent along with a payment to be processed as a way to reward individuals who process payments, uh, like a tip. It is thus believed that the Bitcoin pay payment verification process will move toward a fee per transaction approach. This will make Bitcoins more comparable to how third-party payment processors currently charge a fee. It is hard to estimate whether the fee will be higher or lower, though, than a third party, but this amount will play a crucial role in the Bitcoin's success in the future. A prominent issue with the Bitcoin in its early phase is how the payment form will be accepted and acknowledged by governments around the world. Many are hesitant to allow payment companies to conduct Bitcoin transactions. Since the currency is unregulated and not backed by a central bank, when a country does rule on whether financial institutions within its jurisdiction can conduct Bitcoin transactions, the price of Bitcoins can rise or drop very sharply. China recently banned its financial institutions from conducting Bitcoin transactions, which led to a drastic drop in the Bitcoin price. The Bitcoin technology from its inception was developed with nearly every aspect of the payment process accounted for in some way. Since the payment system has already been developed, it really cannot be improved upon. It will either be accepted as it exists or rejected due to uncertainties or potentially high transaction fees in the future. There are, however, outside services related to Bitcoin that could certainly use improvement and or some regulation, such as online Bitcoin exchanges. The biggest way that the technology can advance as a payment form is to be accepted by countries and governments. Since there is no company or known individual who is running the Bitcoin payment system, it is difficult to encourage more retailers to accept it. The only presumable way a retailer would accept Bitcoin is due to the lower transaction fees compared to that of Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. If a company can realize the savings that Bitcoin offers as a payment system, the technology can continue to spread and become more well known as a payment option. 
The first company that we looked at that accepts Bitcoins is Tiger Direct, more specifically their online website at tigerdirect.com. They're an online and catalog retailer that sells computers as well as other consumer electronics. The company's website does feature an interactive page that allows consumers and any customers visiting that website to watch a video to learn more about what Bitcoin is and what it does, as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started using Bitcoins specifically on their website to make purchases. I think it's really interesting that Tiger Direct's website does also not only have this interactive page giving the step-by-step -step guide, but it also includes tips on how to get involved in Bitcoin mining or how to earn Bitcoins without making a purchase. Tiger Direct was one of the largest retailers that began accepting Bitcoins as a form of payment starting in January of 2014. As such, the future evolution of the Bitcoin can have a significant impact on this company. The company is able to constantly convert the price of an item into a Bitcoin price based on the current price of a Bitcoin on an exchange. I pulled an image from Tiger Direct's website here uh, that shows the conversion to a Bitcoin price. It's here is 0 0.0383 Bitcoin. Um, and then an individual has like 15 minutes to complete the transaction. This is probably due to the ability of Bitcoin to change uh, prices on these exchanges, so they want to make sure they get the price locked in. The only issue that comes with accepting Bitcoins at its website is that once a transaction is completed, the company receives a fixed amount of Bitcoins from its customer. The value of these Bitcoins that they received can either go up or down, though, based on the value of Bitcoins on a Bitcoin exchange. I imagine, uh, but it's hard to find any evidence, that the company immediately converts Bitcoins it receives as quickly as possible into a currency like the U.S. dollar. Uh, even in converting the Bitcoins as soon as possible, the price of Bitcoins could go up or down and Tiger Direct could receive less money or possibly even more money than the purchase price of an item. This could mean that an item with slim margins could actually create a loss for Tiger, Tiger Direct merely just by accepting Bitcoins. Also related to when the company converts its Bitcoins into a currency, if it does in fact do so, is the impact that governments can have on the price of Bitcoins if it either allows or disallows financial institutions within its nations to conduct Bitcoin transactions. This is just like when China disallowed its financial institutions from conducting Bitcoin transactions, the prices dropped dramatically. Uh, events like this could also lead to losses for Tiger Direct in converting Bitcoins at lower prices. In accepting Bitcoins as a payment form, Tiger Direct can save a great amount of money of transaction fees it currently pays to credit card companies. With annual revenue likely in the hundreds of millions of dollars, it is able to save around 2% of its total revenues, and this amount goes straight to the bottom line. If the company has around $300 million in annual sales, this could mean an additional $6 million in profit if all the transactions were conducted by Bitcoins. So this has a pretty significant impact on the profit of the company. Another website that we looked at that utilizes Bitcoins is WordPress.com. This is a blogging and web page creation site that has also begun utilizing Bitcoin in their online store. Like we had previously mentioned with Tiger Direct, WordPress created an informative guide to Bitcoin for their users and how to use Bitcoin specifically to make purchases on their website. So Bitcoin now joins credit cards and PayPal as the acceptable forms of payment for the site. What is interesting about WordPress is that it is run on open source software and they make a point to their users that Bitcoin is also ran on such software to make that connection for users who are using WordPress maybe because they happen to be fond of open source that, oh, Bitcoin uses the same thing, it has that similarity, they would probably be a big fan of Bitcoin as well, hence promoting the use of Bitcoin with their specific segment of users. 
I also find it interesting that the informative video that is provided on WordPress.com utilizes the same technology as did Tiger Direct in giving a general overview of the technology of Bitcoin as well as a step-by-step -step guide, particularly for that website on how to use Bitcoin and how Bitcoin can be applied to their specific online store. Now we'll look at the future evolution of Bitcoin and its impact on WordPress. Now that WordPress accepts Bitcoin as a payment form on its website, it faces many of the same risks and upsides I discussed that Tiger Direct also faces in accepting Bitcoin. Just like Tiger Direct, it could also see gains or losses based on the fluctuation in Bitcoin price when it goes to convert its Bitcoins to a currency and also enjoy the lower transaction fees on payments it receives. It's also important to consider the impact that Bitcoin, as it grows to be a more widely used form of payment, could have over credit card companies as a payment form at websites like WordPress. As more payments switch to Bitcoin transactions, Word WordPress could see less chargeback fees occurring. Currently, a company that accepted a payment that is having a chargeback applied is hit with a fee anywhere from $25 to $100 per chargeback. This could result in substantial cost savings. Also, there are no fraud costs that can really be associated with Bitcoins. If a Bitcoin private key is stolen, that risk of loss is on the Bitcoin holder, not, the co not on the company. Unlike credit cards, a reusable card number could not be stolen from a Bitcoin transaction occurring on a website like WordPress. Any liability of loss comes down to the consumer or Bitcoin holder. Since Bitcoins offer a no or very low fee and also a safer method of payment, ultimately it should result in positive outcomes for consumers. Either through lower prices since companies would face less fraud charges or chargebacks, or even for individuals who don't even use Bitcoins, they may see their credit card companies beefing up their security and possibly even lowering transaction fees to compete with that of Bitcoin. In either event, the consumer and retailer, such as WordPress, could look to benefit from the growth of Bitcoins as a payment form.